used to the offensive line. How beneficial is it to have a veteran like Calvin Beecham in that room? Huge, yeah. Beach has played a you know a, a, a good role for us. Um, you know, obviously a productive <laughs> player, a guy that we feel good about going in there and playing. So uh, glad we have him. This is some of the least he's played over the previous couple seasons. Obviously, with uh, DJ and PJ on the other side of the offensive line, how do you think he's kind of embraced that new role? He's been excellent. He's an ultimate pro. Uh, I talk to him a lot. I pick his brain a lot. Um, he always has a good viewpoint of what's going on and and things like that. So he's been a huge resource for me. Oh, we'll see how the week goes. Any updates on DJ or Will? Not right now. We'll see how the week kind of goes with all those guys. Do you expect Amari to practice this week? Mm, we'll kind of see how the week goes. What's your just general excitement level of getting to watch Kyler today? In a different kind of phase of his comeback? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, we talked about it. It'll be we got a good day, good week of practice set up, laid out for us. And um, he's he's probably more excited than me. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> it's, uh, level of excitement's high. Seems like to get after it in practice. I mean, you have to kind of scale it back a little bit. Yeah, he. Well, that's why he is who he is. You know what I mean? That's why he's a very productive, really good player because of the way he practices and prepares. So, and that I think trickles down to the team. You know, and that's one of the reasons he's a captain. But uh, because of his habits on a daily basis, you know, he's a he displays winning behavior day in and day out. Um, so yeah, we'll be smart about how we do things with him, but we'll see how he responds today. Talk a lot about complimentary football and, of course, and special teams. How, how much of a loss for those units is, is Bobby Price? Yeah, I mean, we had to put him on IR, had a little bit of a quad, but um, he's been playing good football for us. So um, we've got to pick up the slack with some other guys. Is that something you've seen over the years just with special teams coaches? and how many times they have to really adjust because of guys coming up or down. Yeah, there's no doubt that's a really good point, Howard, because that's, you know, you know, with guys, just like you just said, guys going up and down and getting reps where they need reps and being able to execute what the job description is. But, you know, honestly, Jeff and Sam do a really good job. We have those, you know, we do some different things with developmental periods and things like that, get them live reps um, because reps are gold. So... Uh, we feel good about who's going to go out there. What's the best case scenario for Tyler short term in the rest of the season? Um, I would think just to get comfortable with what he's doing and produce, you know, and make sure that we stay healthy, and um, which he's done a really good job with. Um, but uh, you know, take it day by day. You stop wearing a brace. Uh, are you okay with that? Yeah. So, sometimes guys who are on IR a little bit out of sight, out of mind. I'm just curious with with John Gaines and what the progress has been. With yeah, he's in there every day. Um, he's not out of sight, out of mind. I know why you say that. But, yeah, we get all those guys. I mean, from LJ to CeeLos to Elijah to Zach Ertz, they're in there. Um, so, and sometimes they go away to get some different treatments, things like that. Um, but uh, they're very much a part of the team. Can we have Tyler's mental awareness about what his body is now compared to what it used to be? I'm sure there was a time when you had to come to grips with that. Has he done that yet? Do you think that's an ongoing process? I think that's an ongoing process. You know, I mean, even the first time, you know, truthfully, the mock game in Cleveland was cold and rainy and damp, and he responded a little bit different to that, you know. And um, so he'll he'll continue to have those type of things as he gets going. Uh, I've never had a knee, but I know that you know the, you listen to the people that really know know about it, and that will be an ongoing process. You've uh, prepared for Taylor, Taylor Heineke before. What is it that he can just? He just seems like he battles out there. He's yeah, he plays fast and he can make off schedule plays. You know what I mean? So he uh, he can move around, make plays with his legs. Um, He's, he's, he's got a strong arm, so he can push the ball down the field, um, both on time and, and you know, off schedule. Um, and I know he's very, very smart, and he operates well, so big challenge ahead. You indicated after Sunday's game, right after that, you're going to take, I think you said you're going to be more involved in the offense. No, I never said that. Something like that? No. Okay. No. I don't think I'm going to start calling plays anytime soon. No, I guess I'm not maybe 
No, I, I have our, no, to, um, you know, I, um, I've kind of come to a process that I handle with the offense, with the position coaches, and with Drew, with the players that I'm comfortable with right now. And uh, I'm really a resource to help those guys. Um, and But just so you guys know, anything that goes on on the field, I am okay with. So that, and it's not like, but they have full autonomy to do what they do, the coordinators I'm talking, and the position coaches. But I'm in lockstep of if you guys think, oh, they shouldn't have did that, JG's probably mad, that's never the case. Like, I know exactly what's going on on the field, and those guys have my backing 100%. Overall, excuse me, overall, what do you see from this Falcons team? Yeah, well, offensively, they're top three in explosives. They generate explosives. They got some unique skill guys um, that they deploy differently. Um, you guys didn't do your research. Uh, two years, I shared an office this big with their head coach. And um, he was the offensive quality control. I was defensive quality control in Tennessee. So he's... Um, you know, he's committed to running the ball and finds creative ways to do that. And then when you say, you know what, we're going to stop the run, he throws it over your head. So it's a very hard scheme to go against, and he's got good skill. It's well coached. Um, that would I say with about the offense. The defense, you know, he hired a new coordinator from New Orleans. Um, they bought some players, some premier players this offseason. Um, they, they got good skill all three levels. They mix up looks. They do a good job of rushing cover. Uh, they good. They do a really good job on first down efficiency to get you behind the sticks, and um, so we got to make sure we play the game on our terms. Um, special teams, they do a couple different things as far as with their return units, um, so we got to be able to combat that a little bit. And um, and as always, I think to play penalty free uh, and generate some explosives in the in, on fourth down. That that's helped our team immensely. Personally, and then professionally knowing him, how he thinks. I mean, it goes into you turn over every stone, but um, you know he's an enemy on Sunday. Drew, what goes into your defense being so successful with tackles for loss? I think it's a combination of of execution and technique. You know, so um, you know the guys understand when. You know, their numbers called when possible plays like that can come up. That's a really good question. Um, but we don't scheme in a way to say, hey, let's have, you know, a bunch of TFLs, you know. But with saying that, they know that in certain calls, they're going to get a one-on-one -on -one and have a, the, the possibility of certain play types, those things to happen. So I think it's those guys understanding where they fit into the call, the strength and the stress, and then executing if those things do come up. Drew mentioned yesterday sending a text to Josh after that game Sunday when you saw what happened. What was your reaction? Yeah, he played well. I mean, he played well. He made a lot of off-schedule plays, you know, watching the game, the Atlanta's defense, you know, seeing that happen on tape, um, but not surprising, honestly. You feel like that quarterback room is getting more comfortable after kind of a hectic week last week? Whose quarterback room? Your quarterback room. I mean, just with the change, the trade. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, though, they handled it in stride. You know what I mean? We, we, you know, made the decision to go with Clayton or, or Kyler, and then the trade presented itself, which that's what we ended up doing, brought Jeff back. Um, I like how they handled the week. I like how they're going to handle this week. They know the plan moving forward. And, you know, those guys, Clayton came back in the building yesterday or Monday or Tuesday, and, you know, I need to improve on these things in practice. How can I do it? You know, it's all of our guys are very self-aware. They want to improve their game so they can help the team. With your quarterback coming back now, is it kind of a, a reset of sorts for this team with kind of pre and now coming forward? No, I don't see it like that. I see it as we got to put all our energy and focus into beating Atlanta. With Kyler's return and the expected offensive boost, how does that benefit the other side of the football for you guys? I mean, you know, I... I I don't know. We got to play clean football in all three phases. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I don't, I, we got to do our job on defense and special teams. Doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. Coach, thank you. Okay. Thank you guys.